All right, so today we're going to talk about telephony, USOC, pods, and 25 pair color code. And as I said, this lecture might be broken into two. We might be able to carry it on. Let's see how we're going to do with timing, okay? Uh, all right, so the, uh, the, first, uh, the first slide, uh, I actually I have uploaded so you can follow the slides. All right, so just a quick background on telephony. We're going to start right from scratch when the telephone was invented into the VoIP, uh, voice over IP systems, uh, which is going to be not today, but uh, the next couple lectures. All right, so Alexander Grang Bell, he invented the telephone when he was 29. His first words spoken on phone was, Watson, come here, I want to see you. That was the that were the first words spoken on the telephone ever uh, in March 10th, um, 1876. So that's a few years ago, all right? He refused to keep a telephone in his office. Uh, hold on, just give me a sec here. There's some noise in the background. <laughs> All right. Uh, he refused to keep a telephone in his office. In his view, a telephone was a distraction. Now think about that. Uh, how far have we gone with that idea here, right? So the guy who invented the telephone, he didn't even want to have a telephone on his desktop in his office because he thought it was a distraction. Uh, think of that when next time you log on to Facebook, for example, or something like that, all right? Uh, okay, so what inspired him to invent the, uh, this, uh, this, I'll call it a contraption? Uh, his mother, Elisa, was hard of hearing. Speech pathology was of his interest since the early years of his life. And if you want to have some more info, you can click on that link or you can just uh, research things on his own. Research this, uh, this uh, wonderful individual, uh, the, the wonderful inventor. Um, on your own. Uh, it's a, actually a fascinating story, that and uh, Tesla as well and other names. Okay, so let's just keep going here. Uh, this was the first telephone. That's, this is what it looked like. Uh, it had a uh, thing on the cradle here. Uh, so this would be a mouthpiece, the microphone, uh, and the receiver, you would put that to your ear. All right, um, so, uh, so that's basically was a commercial use of that. And I'm sure you, if you have watched some of the movies that the action takes place some years ago, you could I could see how uh, uh, how that thing was used. Uh, in some of the museums, you can see uh, things like that. This is the Centennial transmitter, right? And uh, telephone uh, since the beginning it went well at the beginning. The telephone when, when it was invented, just think about it. Uh, the only way of communicating over a longer distance was to send a letter, all right? Or uh, even the earlier years would be, if you want to get it quickly, it would send a pigeon, but you could only have so many pigeons because pigeons always find home. So you would just strap a little piece of note uh, to the uh, pigeon's uh, feet or legs and it will release that pigeon. And when the pigeon would come home, you would get the message, but you could only have so many pigeons to send home one way. They would only work one way, all right? Uh, so um, now when, uh, when, uh, when something like that was invented, uh, a telephone, it was a big deal because all of a sudden you could communicate over a longer distance and using voice um, as opposed to a telegraph, which we're going to look at that. So it was a, such a big deal that there were movies made on how to, well not how to, there was no YouTube, there were movies made uh, about. Yeah. <laughs> talking on the phone, right? So here is the actor portraying Alexander Graham Bell in 1926 silent film. This shows Bell first telephone transmitter microphone, okay? Invented in 1976 and the first displayed centennial uh, exposition in Philadelphia. Now I, uh, I kept looking, I kept looking and Googling and uh, researching and I can't find the name of that actor. That uh, that used to uh, uh, that, that was playing that role. Notice one uh, interesting thing: uh, uh, the face uh, of this actor is uh, quite bright right here, uh, and if you look at the back of his neck, it's a little bit darker. Um, and uh, that was the earlier uh, way of making movies or uh, making films. Uh, the media was not as good as today. There was no digital technology then. 
uh, it was just a film, and it uh, the the uh, the quality of the film um, well, was okay then. But if you compare to the quality of the f film or the media today, it was not up to par as uh, as it is today. So, anyways, uh, how did they make those? Uh, you know, they needed some contrast. Uh, uh, so, uh, just as an interesting side note, uh, those actors used lard to smear on their faces, uh, so it would reflect the light better. So, uh, you know, think of that when you uh, when you see a kissing scene uh, from like 1927 or something like that. That thing would reek of lard, I think. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, anyways, uh, March 10, 1876, Alexander Graham Bell successfully telephones Thomas Watson for the first time and again how big of a deal was that look this guy is wearing a suit and tie and he's being photographed using a telephone all right so and then uh, if you look at the expression on his face uh, he felt really cool using that thing all right and of course there will be public demonstrations people will dress up as if they went to church and you know suit and ties and uh, and they would go and watch the uh, watch somebody use a telephone uh, to communicate over a long distance using voice all right now co co is a terminology uh, that kind of stuck with us till this day uh, it's a popular terminology co stands for central office uh central office uh in the early years were just uh, were just a bunch of switchboards uh, that would um uh that would use humans uh, to switch the telephones uh, right now what you do is just dial the number and press the send button and the whole thing happens by itself automatically before um there was no you know the technology was not as advanced as it is today so you needed uh, uh, human in, uh, in, ingerence, uh, you need the human uh, interference in in order to patch telephones to the right persons. Now the uh, the small uh, small town um, telephone exchange would look like this right here, where there will be a telephone operator, and this here that's sticking from her chest right there, that's a microphone, and of of course he's wearing the uh, the headphones. In order to communicate with the people who want to make a telephone call so the popular thing uh, well now uh, if you have a stationary telephone you pick up the phone you hear the dial tone okay uh, like a continuous sound um, now with, your, with our cell phones right now you don't even hear that you just punch the numbers and press send button but before that uh, whenever you picked up the phone uh, there will be a light that would light up on the switchboard and uh, the popular thing to hear a that time was number please okay uh, so whenever you picked up the phone I put it to your ear you would hear number please okay so um, you know in, in some of the smaller towns uh, people would know other people by name so you would say can you connect me to mrs. Smith and she says yeah right away and she would just uh, uh, use those quarter inch uh, patch cords to uh, to uh, mm, to patch your conversation, all right? And uh, whenever you, uh, the conversation was ended, uh, there will be another light uh, uh, signaling to the operator that the, uh, the line is released, so she would just unplug that line, okay? So uh, in, uh, in uh, the bigger cities, uh, things would uh, go a little bit larger, so uh, there will be a bunch of, it was a popular job, uh, especially for women there in the earlier years. Later on, uh, guys also uh, participated in that. Uh, it would be uh, this would be a larger city uh, telephone exchange or central office or CO. Okay, so keep that in the back of your mind. All right, now uh, today the central office looks like this. There is no humans involved whatsoever, uh, as as far as the normal operation of uh, of uh, of the day. Uh, you know the humans would uh, interfere uh, when needed uh, when you know, service was needed, service is needed. And stuff like that. So this is basically a computerized system or computer network. Right? So telephone exchange CO, then CO right now, all digital and utilizing uh, the Ethernet technology uh, for the most part. Right? Now the tech staff, uh, the, uh, um, uh, it, the operation was quite simple. Uh, basically, there would be a, an electromagnet, and I'm pretty sure you have studied some of the magnetism. If not, you will. 
uh, the, uh, the, the, the basic operation is that if you, um, if you have a coil um, uh, in the form of an inductor, and if you have a metallic core over that, uh, if you move that uh, metal, piece of metal inside a coil, you are going to um, uh, generate electricity. Okay, if you move it back and forth very fast, you're going to generate electricity with a certain frequency. So if you interface that with some sort of a membrane, okay, then uh, that membrane would vibrate with the frequencies of your voice, and this would carry that signal into through a wire through another device just like that, and it would um, uh, reproduce the sound of another membrane. So this would be the speaker, so the, sorry, the microphone, and this would be the speaker. Or if you want to go and reverse that, it would just uh, you know you have a two-way conversation, and the the power. Uh, um, the uh, what was needed for that is just needed a little bit of a DC power to go through that uh, through the coil. So normally DC is not uh, doing anything with the coils. Coil will pass on the DC. However, when you start speaking, you're making the the membrane vibrate. You're creating a DC, sorry, AC riding on a DC element, and that's uh, when you have changes. Then the coil reacts. Okay. So, uh, so that um, uh, that's as far as the tech stuff. So this also was uh, used as a telegraph in the earlier days. All right, telegraph was using something that was called a Morse code. So this actually was this previous slide here. This was most most uh, pretty much uh, not telephony but telegraphy. You now telephony was the telegraph improved a little bit. So instead of just carrying the uh, note or the sound uh, on or off. Uh, sort of like a digital, but not. Uh, it was a binary system, but not digital. Okay, so um, uh, there was little later on was improved to uh, to carry on the voice. All right, so uh, the, there would be a popular job as a telegraphist. Okay, or the telegraph operator, and most of the telegraph machines would be installed around the train stations, simply because uh, when uh, you had a train track, the infrastructure was pretty much laid. Uh, laid out for the uh, to uh, to install the utility poles and extend the wiring around that. So, again, if you see some of the old movies, you're going to see the telegraph lines along the rail tracks. And sometimes, when you see some of the existing rail tracks out of town, you're either going to see some of the abandoned already wires that used to be used for telegraph communications, or you're going to see some of the utility poles still there and some of the telegraph lines just hanging off, just like a bunch of hair from there. All right, so there would be a, that's that. So te uh, telegraph uh, utilized a Morse code uh, using dots and dashes uh, in order to form letters. So you've got a T T T T D T D T D, you know, things like that, and uh, and it, it involved some knowledge of learning those letters. And if uh, you know, if if somebody transmitted those signals or dots and dashes uh, uh, quite fast, the other person who knows that Morse code, who knew the Morse code, uh, they would be able to decipher that and uh, transmit the message back and forth. So that was the idea of a telegraph. Uh, telegraph was, or the Morse code later on, uh, utilized the radio waves, uh, and it was quite popularly used uh, during the Second World War times. Okay, uh, so um, hold on. Okay, we got some background noise here, but uh, it's going to go off pretty soon. All right, they're gone. <laughs> All right. Okay, so uh, so that as far as a telegraph. Also. Um, here, the next uh, picture here, it just shows the earlier, um, you know, it will be like something um, 20s or 30s, 1920s and 1930s. Well, now we have 2020s, so it will be like 100, 100 years ago, right? Or maybe even more. Uh, so this will be the utility pulse, and these, the telegraph lines would look, uh, they would look just, uh, just like that, right? And uh, as I say, quite often, they would be uh, from from city to city or from town to town, they would be extended uh, along the railroad tracks. Okay, now here is what they look like around the roads or railroad tracks. So these would be the old, pretty much uh, not used anymore uh, telegraph uh, lines. Okay, now 
uh, when you download and you click on that little YouTube link here, you can you can get sentimental if you want, and you can play uh, the song that is called "The Telegraph Road" by Dire Straits. It's just one of those things, right? Uh, it's a you know it's a cool song. Uh, you can listen to that. Right now, is that what it is here? Yeah. Okay. Mm, come on. Here. All right, so um, uh, the terminology, we're going to, uh, to step into the terminology world, uh, tip and ring, okay? Now, if there are any guitar players uh, or musicians uh, in, in the house, uh, they would uh, kind of recognize this sort of jack. It's called a quarter inch jack, quarter inch because of the diameter of that, uh, uh, that uh, shaft right here is a quarter inch, right? Now... Uh, this one here is originally tip, ring, and sleeve. So here is the tip part of it, and here will be the insulator. There will be a ring, and there will be the sleeve. And sometimes the sleeve is abandoned, so there will be just a tip and just a long prong here, just serving as a ring. Okay. Um, now, uh, pretty much music industry is the only thing that's using that. So you would, you would use that kind of a jack to plug into your guitar input okay, or output. Uh, and uh, and uh, carry on with the with the sound. All right. So uh, and then or tip ring and sleeve they would be correspondingly correct, connected inside to the appropriate terminals, and uh, they will carry the signal here. Now, uh, tip and ring is still the terminology is still being used in the telephony, uh, simply because. Um, um, in the earlier years, when I showed you that picture of the earlier telephone exchange, these would be the patch cables that would have this type of endings on, and uh, and uh, they would have tip, and they would have ring. Okay, now uh, here's the thing: um, tip and ring. Okay. Uh, okay, let's just uh, go here. Ring would be minus 48 volts and the tip would be um, basically positive with reference to the ring. So, when you're plugging in your guitar, for example, if you have just a tip and ring, okay, so the ring would serve as sort of like a ground reference and the tip would be positive, would carry the signal, would, ref would be positive with reference to the grounded or the ground reference uh, sleeve uh, or ring terminal, okay? Uh, now, um, when it comes to telephony, you are util we are utilizing the most uh, basic telephone system would be, uh, the most basic telephone service would be the POTS, which stands for plain old telephone service POTS, okay? Uh, so, the two wires are, uh, one is a ground reference and one is a signal, or one is a reference and one is a signal. Mm -hmm. uh, the terminology carried over, so when we talk about, when we are talking uh, the technical jargon when installing telephones and having anything to do with the telephone installations and service, we are still calling those two terminals tip and ring, although they have nothing in common already with the physical shape of the quarter inch jack, still the terminology just carries on. Now, how is how it works? Now, I, I, I need you to pay attention to this kind of stuff here because it's a little bit confusing at, uh, at first, but then you're going to... Uh, um, you're going to... Uh, uh, once you once you kind of give it some thought and look at it a few times and analyze it, it's going to be quite easy, right? Now, remember when I talked uh, the tip and ring, um, the ring would be the ground reference and the tip would be the positive with reference to the ground. That's when it comes to carrying a music signal in music uh, industry, mm -hmm. electronic signal representing music. In telephony, it's the same thing. However, it's things a little bit different, right? Originally, it was also that way, right? So there would be the tip and ring, the, the ring would have the ground reference, and it would be equal to the ground, or the grounding, the earth ground. The potential would be equal to the ground. And then the tip would be positive with reference to the ring. So the ring would be at the ground reference, 
and the tip would be positive and would carry the signal. Uh, before long, uh, it was found that uh, there was a problem with the telephone lines or the telegraph lines extending from town to town on the utility poles. They would corrode a lot. Okay, So uh, somebody came up with the idea, what if we just uh, uh, reverse the polarity somehow, see if we could, uh, see if we could uh, prevent the corrosion. So here's the ground. Instead of the tip being positive with reference to ground, the whole thing was shifted just like that. So the tip is with a reference to ground and the ring is still negative with reference to the tip, but it's also below the ground as far as electrical potential. Right? So that's why um, when you look at this, um, this, this picture here, you could see the tip is still positive with reference to the ring. Right? The tip is still positive with reference to the ring. Just keep the sleeve, keep the sleeve for, for now. Imagine that there is no sleeve because some of the jacks are, some of them considered a stereo or mono, or some of the jacks are considered balanced and unbalanced. Okay, and we'll, we'll, I'll explain that to you in a second. So just imagine the sleeve doesn't exist. It's just an unbalanced uh, jack, which only has tip and, tip and ring. Okay, so ring is negative with reference to the tip. Over here we have the same thing. All right? The tip is positive with reference to the ring. Nothing changes. However, the tip is with the... Uh, it's brought to the ground level, so the ring is more negative than the ground. The proportion still remained, but, uh, but things were shifted down. All right? So, and it's going to be on a test for sure. Uh, the tip is positive with a reference to ring, but the tip is equal to the ground. So the ring is more negative than the tip and is more negative than the ground. Right? Now, voltages. It involved, the voltages involve DC voltages. Okay, so I just put, I just drew the power supply here. So the voltage would be 48 volt DC when the pot telephone, which is the regular plain old telephone service telephone, uh, at its idle state. So it's just sitting on the cradle, nothing happens. You always will have 48 volts DC across those two terminals, those two wires. One telephone line consists of two wires. And do you remember the uh, name of those two wires? Of course, it will be tip and ring. Okay. Uh, so, um, now, when the telephone rings, the voltage goes up to minimum 90 volts DC. You bring that line, you increase the voltage to 90 volts DC, it is going to make a telephone ring. That's how the circuitry is built inside the telephone. It's also called a uh, single line telephone set. Uh, Okay, Caesar is asking any color code about the ring and tip. Yes, so uh, when I uh, when I look, if you look at this here, the tip is green and ring is red. That is the uh, that is um, with the original uh, telephone line telephone cable. All right, so that would be line one. And uh, if you want to have two lines, uh, it will be black and yellow, and so there will be uh, two lines in one cable. And the third line would be uh, white and blue. Okay, but uh, let's just concentrate on the red and green, or green and red. Uh, so green would be positive, red would be negative. If you ever see some of the original telephone installations um, done before the new color code was implemented. All right. Uh, good question, Caesar. Uh, so um, now, um, so it is. It is important to remember that at the idle, the line sits at 48 volts DC. The tip, even though it is positive with reference to ring, it is equal to the ground. And the ring is negative, so it's below the ground potential. When the phone rings, in order to make the phone ring, you raise the voltage on that line to 90 volts minimum. 
and uh, sometimes it's going to make a telephone ring and sometimes that 90 volts is going to be sensed by a sensing circuitry uh, on other devices such as ATA and we'll talk about what ATAs are all right now just a little quick thing here about tape ring and sleeve uh, just so you have a full understanding of this type of a jack here okay uh, balanced and unbalanced uh, signal I'm just going to lower the light a little bit so you can see my marker better uh, quick thing here all right when you have for example a signal that is with a ground reference okay one wire and here's another wire doesn't matter which way the signal goes. Uh, on this other wire, there will be a signal here, just like that. It will be audio signal or whatever else. So you have a ground reference and a positive reference or a signal reference here. It is called unbalanced signal, this way here. Okay, now. Now, when we go to something that's called a balanced, you're going to have three lines, three wires. One is going to be the ground reference. And then there's going to be negative wire, negative signal, and positive signal. And in order to send a balanced signal, you're going to have a signal going on the positive side. Plus and minus, positive sign, side. And you're going to have an... 180 degrees inverted signal I'm going to try to do this this way here just like that so those two signals are 180 degrees out of phase right? uh, and that is the only way that whatever receives that signal is going to see it as a signal it's uh, you can research if you want something that's called a differential amplifier that is going to recognize that and only that as a signal the signal has to be completely 180 degrees out of phase then it's going to be recognized as a signal if so what's the advantage to that well uh, okay so here is balanced signal here All right now imagine that when you have a you know when you send a signal low level signal or something well, low level uh, let's say one volt peak to peak or so over a longer distance uh the further the signal gets away from the source it deteriorates right to the point that you can only send it so far now imagine along the way somewhere there is going to be like a lightning strike in a distance or maybe there's going to be some transformer making noise or maybe some whatever a volkswagen drives by all right uh so um, uh you're going to have noise spikes and those noise spikes are going to carry on by just a regular preamplifier or amplifier now if you have a balanced line if something creates interference you're going to have spike here and spike here and let's say spike here and spike here notice that those spikes are going to be in phase so whatever is in phase is going to be ignored and whatever is 100 degrees 180 degrees out of phase it's going to be treated as a signal so the balanced lines have much much less noise interference they're not, they not susceptible to, to noise uh, to, to the noise interference that's why the balanced line was invented now, uh, when it comes to microphones, uh, uh, microphones would be uh, uh, using those three prongs, XLR, uh, and they're called XLR uh, prongs. Uh, so, um, the signal level from a microphone will be maybe like one millivolt peak to peak, and uh, one millivolt peak to peak signal uh, is pretty much uh, comparable to whatever noise from outside would interfere so if you had the unbalanced line with a microphone that uh, sound coming from the microphone could be quite noisy you see okay if you have uh, if you introduce the balanced line then all the hiss all the noise all the spikes are going to be ignored and you can carry a low level signal over longer distances 100 feet 200 feet okay 
uh, which would you would not be able to carry on with the balance signal. Balance signals uh, are usually uh, used, or so unbalanced signals are usually used for active elements as opposed to passive. Microphone would be passive, dynamic microphone would be just a membrane, and that would create the uh, the AC component onto that line. Uh, now, when it comes to unbalanced, um, it's okay to use them with a higher level signal, uh, like a, it's called line level signal. Uh, and those would be active devices such as keyboards, um, uh, anything that uses electricity that, and is able to produce a stronger signal. So here is the balanced and unbalanced uh, signal. The telephones are using the unbalanced, uh, the regular pots are using unbalanced uh, signal. So here is... Uh, now, of course, the uh, unbalanced would implement tip and ring. So this would be the ring. This would be the tip. Okay. Now, I forgot which was uh, tip ring and sleeve. Uh, so this would be, uh, okay, this would be tip. This would be a ring. And this would be the sleeve. Okay. When it comes to, uh, but uh, uh, I'm going to verify that. All right. For the yeah, for if it was the uh, for for music industry okay uh, usage all right now so here is the difference between the balanced and unbalanced signal how are we doing with time we still have some we have still have a few minutes yes we're going to break those that lesson into two probably okay you sock okay not you suck but you sock. USOC stands for Universal Service Ordering Code. Uh, just a long story short, um, some time ago, uh, when the telephones were in, telephone was invented, uh, all kinds of different installation techniques would have to be invented. Different companies would install their telephones within the area of operation, and they would use their own technology. They would use their own size of jacks, they will produce their own type of uh, terminals and things like that. So from company to company, things will be incompatible, mostly for the physical, you know, due to the physical differences. Right? Later on, uh, some that universal service ordering code was uh, implemented that, uh, you know what, let's just uh, get everybody on the same page because this is happening too much. Uh, the telephone uh, systems are, the telephone service is getting too wide. Let's standardize some ways, all right? So, uh, uh, so universal service ordering code was implemented, and we'll talk about that in a second here. Uh, and uh, RJ terminals, okay? RJ jack or RJ um, mm, RJs, all right? Because RJ stands for registered jack. And for example, here you can see RJ eleven. You can see how many prongs. One, let's just zoom in a little bit. How many prongs do we see here? One, two, three, four. So this would, this RJ11 would be able to carry two telephone lines because he has four prongs. Now RJ12, for example, is uh, similar. Uh, basically, physically uh, looks the same, but it would, see there's those empty slots here for the prongs. It would uh, use one, two, three, four, five, six. All six prongs would be used, or six slots would be used for the prongs. So that RG12 jack would uh, be able to carry three telephone lines, three pots lines. And again, pots stands for plain old telephone service. Yeah. All right, so that's, uh, that's what the telephone jacks look like. Now let's take a look at the next slide. Now we have the use of configuration for RJ register jack wiring configuration here. Right? Here's the old system, here's the modern color code. You still can see both, all right? So I just want you to know the color codes. The red and green, all right? So this will be the jack that would carry one, two, three lines. Uh, USOC wiring configuration. How is it that the lines are arranged in the jack? It's different from the T568 configuration, which will be the data. And uh, some of us already have performed the lab using the um, jack and the plug. 
that has to do with the data. And I want you to know the differences between the USOC and something that's called T568 configuration. USOC is a little bit simpler, not much, but a little bit simpler. And the Ethernet used T568 standard is slightly more complicated, but not much. All right. USOC configuration. There's a jack, you have prongs. The prongs on the jack, right? Line number one, right? Line number two, line number three, line number four. So it'll be a tip and ring for one line number one. And then you go outwards, tip and ring line number two. You go outwards, tip and ring line number three, and so on. Well, usually it will be up to four lines uh, because you can only have those jacks so big. So that's the use of configuration. Remember that. We just go outwards. And it will be the POTS wiring, POTS or use of configuration, universal service ordering code. So this is how we have here. You can see here tip one and ring one. And then they're going to be inversed, all right? just so we don't have the buildup of the DC on one side, uh, the polarity doesn't build up on one side and the other. So tip and ring, two middle prongs, red and green, or green and red, tip and ring. Remember, tip is positive with reference to ring, but the tip would be uh, grounded. So the ring will be more negative than ground, right? So here's line one, line two, would be tip one and ring uh, tip two and ring two but you see they go uh, they kind of inverse as far as polarity here's tip and ring and it's ring and tip and it's tip and ring again it's like a kind of a sandwiching together like oreo cookies right? uh, so uh, then the tip and ring two would be black and yellow so here's the answer to the question caesar uh, and, uh, and then um, the next one would be uh, blue and white. So now you should be able to tell which ones are positive and which ones are negative with reference to each other. Yeah. If you put a voltmeter, if the line is idling between the black and yellow, you are going to see that the tip, you're going to read 48 volts at the idle state. You're going to read 48 volts DC between the black and yellow, right? And the black is going to be positive with reference to yellow. If it's a telephone line, nothing to do with data. Don't, uh, don't get confused this with the data, Ethernet type of wiring. We're talking about the telephone stuff right now. Pots, we are talking pots right now, okay? Now, uh, the modern telephone, uh, modern te the modern color code right now is uh, this is the 25 pair telephone, uh, 25 pair col color code uh, that uh, is implementing slightly different coloring of the wires, right? Remember when we used uh, some of us that have already done the lab? Remember, we used the lines uh, blue, orange, green, brown. This will be the first four colors of the 25 pair color code. So uh, you can use the Ethernet cables to carry the telephone signal. The Ethernet cables um, <clears throat> fulfill more rigorous standards as far as carrying signal without being susceptible to interference as much. You still get a little bit, but not as much as with the telephone, regular telephone cables. Right? They're both twisted pair, and we'll talk about that too, why pair is being twisted. Basically, uh, I'll just give you a heads up a little bit. Uh, when you have two conductors and you put them in a twist, they're less susceptible to interference, and there's less of a chance, if you have two of those pairs beside each other, there's less possibility of something that's called a crosstalk, which means a signal can bleed from one pair to another. So that's why twisted pair was invented, again, by Alexander Graham Bell, that early, okay? Now, 
the Ethernet cables have a more consistent, better twist, and some of the separation between the... I'm getting update notice here. Sorry. All right. Uh, and some of the... Um, it's okay. So uh, the, uh, the cables that are beside each other, or the conductors, or the pairs, because right now, when we talk telephone or communications, we're not talking about wires or conductors. Yes, you can still. You know, it's going to be understood. But if you want to be more technical about while well, you're using the technical terminology with uh, the communications, especially with telephony and data, we're talking pairs. So get used to calling those things pairs. Pair one, pair two, pair three, and so on. Uh, so the, tw the pairs are separated in a certain way, uh, more rigorously, and the twist is more consistent and um, more tight than the regular old telephone uh, wires. So you can, yes, you can use an Ethernet specified cable to carry a telephone signal. But you cannot use the older version of a twisted pair uh, that was designed to just fulfill the, te you know, the telephony um, purposes. You cannot use that for Ethernet signal. It's just that cable is won't, just won't be able to handle the type of data that is transmitted by the data equipment, all right? But since the Ethernet cable has a better twist, it's more rigorous, it exceeds the specifications. So yes, you can, of course, use that to carry the telephone signal. So then again, so now how do they correspond to the uh, green and red, uh, then black and yellow, and the uh, white and blue. Well, pair number one is the blue pair. Pair number two is the orange pair. And pair number three is the green pair. And if there were number uh, uh, four pair, it would be the brown. And if there were number five pair, it would be the slate. Slate stands for gray. Okay. Uh, so... But right now we just use the, the, the Ethernet cable basically has four pairs. Well, this one, just three pairs are being mentioned here. So, and then how are we polarizing those? Tip and ring. So tip would be the stripes. So there is a blue pair. And notice that the blue pair, this one is called solid. It has, sometimes it would have bigger stripes of that color, or just sometimes it will be just a solid wire and the one that corresponds to that to form a pair which they're twisted around each other it would be the white conductor with those tiny little blue stripes so here's a stripe striped conductor or stripe here's a stripe here's a solid that's that's how we're calling those so the stripes would be the tips and the solids would be the rings See that? Stripe for the orange pair here and here. The stripe would be the tip and the, orange, the solid would be the ring. And with the green third pair, stripe is the tip and you can see the solid is being used as a ring and so on, right? So that is, this is as far as, uh, now here, modern color UTP stands for unshielded twisted pair, all right? Old color code, quad cable or screw terminals, uh, and there's the pairs destinations. Uh, there's, uh, yeah, pairs destinations here, right? USOC stands for universal service ordering code. RJ stands for registered jack. This is a registered jack. RJs. These are the RJs. RJ. And this is what the prongs would look like. Here's pair one. Here's pair two. Pair three and pair whatever if there was four. Just remember, in the plain old telephone service, POTS configuration, the pairs, the pair number one is the two middle prongs of the jack. And as we count the pairs, we move those pairs outwards as far as the prongs. So here's pair one, pair two, pair three, and so on. That's the USOC configuration. Data is a little bit different 
one, two, three, and four. So it'd be pair one is also also the blue pair, which would be the blue pair of the modern code or the red and green. Pair two, same thing as you saw, but then once we get into three and four, we put pair number three all the way to the left and pair four all the way to the right. Okay. But we're not talking about that now. I just want you to I just want you to know that because we are carrying some of the data labs. So uh, you might have some questions about how come we're explaining it this way and how come we're doing data the other way. There are differences between the color code wiring and pair positioning between the USOC and the Ethernet. Right? Is that why the Internet used to go out back in the day? Um, well, yes and no. It was just a little bit different. Now, the telephone wires, uh, first of all, the technology was not as advanced as it's now because uh, uh, so the internet was much slower and why the, tele the internet was going up and down was basically uh, had something to do with the circuitry that is being implemented. The technology was a little bit not as, not as advanced as it now. As the years go by, we advance, right? Now the internet is faster. Now, notice that, uh, you know, somebody might ask, uh, why is it that we can have much faster internet, but still the old infrastructure is being used? Well, the answer to that is there's a different type of modulation used. The te technology also advances that we can still use the same old wires to kind of squeeze as much speed out of those old wires as we can. And that has to do with the head end and the receiving end. Uh, the, and, and the key word is the... Um, the, the, the modulation, the type of modulation that's being used uh, to send those wires. And we'll talk about modulation as well. All right. Uh, okay. Um, fiber optics are becoming more common. Yes, fiber optics. We will also talk about fiber optics. Now, um, but that's fiber optics are not using electrical signals to transmit this uh, electricity to transmit the signals. Fiber optics are using light pulses. So we'll talk about that as well. Now, here is a typical telephone jack, surface mount telephone jack. And you are going to still, if you if you go to one of the hardware stores and buy just a regular surface mount jack, you're still going to see the uh, cables that are, if this is a two line jack. And if it's just a one telephone line, you're going to use the red and green only. Right? And they, they, can, they are connected to the two middle prongs. That will be the pair one. If you want to have a two line, if you want to have two lines in that uh, jack, you would utilize red and green, and you would utilize the black and yellow. All right. Uh, now, um, so now because I showed you the previous slides, now you know how to connect things uh, properly. If you if you uh, run your wiring using the Ethernet cables using a twenty five pair color coding. Uh, which we'll talk about too, but the first four colors are blue, orange, green, brown. Five, fifth one would be slate. Slate stands for gray. Okay, uh, so that's this is what, how you would you would connect uh, the blue pair to the red and green, right, and corresponding to the tip and ring terminals. Right. If now it's just as a side note, it should be it, you know, for the most part if it's just a telephone. If you reverse the polarity, the telephone will still work because the telephone apparatuses that's being sold now, they're called single line telephone sets. Why well, it's called single line? It, it, it implements single line, all right, one pair, um, as opposed to using two lines. But SL phone, it's the SL stands for that uh, single line. Plus, you can tell by that is that it uses the um, use uh, POTS, plain old telephone service circuitry protocol, because there are some other system phones, we'll also talk about later, later lectures, the system phones, uh, there could be a Panasonic, Toshiba, Meridian, uh, what other uh, names that sometimes I don't even know, they would be using their own telephone box, their own telephone exchange or mini exchange or local exchange, 
which would be connected to the POTS lines on one side, and on the other side, it would plug in the phones that only work with that system. So they have uh, they have something that's called proprietary, tele proprietary telephone sets, right? But when you're talking about SL, that's a single line set, and that's POTS, right? Now, as a, I kind of wrote this thing here, now that this is what this is where you plug in the telephone cord, and this is where the wire goes. And it says, can you name jack packages other than surface mount? This is a surface mount box. You put it on the wall, on the baseboard, or whatever, it, you can see it. It just mounts to the surface. What other packages? Well, one will be wall mount, right? and the other one will be modular. We'll talk about those. So uh, connect all similar color code wires together, da, 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 based on what we just talked about. Uh, how are we doing? 51. You know what, guys? We're going to stop right here, and we're going to carry on with the next... Uh, we're going to carry on further next time we see each other. I know you have another class to go to, so uh, this time I try to pay attention <laughs> to the timing here. So this, uh, this way you're going to have a chance to uh, grab a drink or uh, make yourself a fresh coffee or go to the washroom before your next class with Mr. Hager. Uh, Hager um, um, continues. All right. Uh, fiber optic is becoming more common now. Yes, they are becoming more and more. Uh, then also, the remember we talked about uh, types of media to transmit that transmit signal? Copper, which we just talked about. Fiber, which uh, Austin just mentioned. And the other one is air. What do you think the Wi-Fi is utilizing? It's utilizing air or space. Radio waves to communicate between your cell phone or your laptop. And the WAP, wireless access point, or AP access point. Right? Or the Wi-Fi terminal. Right? So, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, if there's no any other questions, uh, we're going to uh, terminate this class right now, and uh, we'll see you next time, um, next time around. Thank you so much, Austin, and thank you so much, everybody, for paying attention and sticking around till the end. And have a great day, and I'll see you when I see you. Thank you.